Let me know if the audio is uh, good enough. Raise your hand. It's very important after lunch. No, it's heavy. But if you can hear me, I, I see some smiles. So uh, either you're just uh, along for the stand up show or you're here for the tech talk. Uh, either way, welcome. My name is Kareem Satili. I'm a senior developer advocate at HashiCorp where I focus on telling people about best practices, how to implement them, and don't get paged when stuff breaks, which is my favorite part of the job. It's kind of like platform engineering in that sense. If you have thoughts about this talk, I'm usually at KSatili pretty much everywhere, except on uh, Blue Sky, because they have a very different format. So, uh, you want it closer? Even closer. Wow, we got this. There we go. So, real talk. Tech conferences are great, but we all have a personal life. Uh, we had a pretty significant change last year. Uh, we got a daughter, uh, so first time father, as best as I know. And this is impactful, right? If you have kids, it changes your life in the best possible way. Uh, no more disposable income, no more time to game. Um, yeah, and other than that, it's also great because you're constantly sick. But the people that love, they know what I'm talking about. But there's this promised future of them getting to the age where they can join you for gaming. And so, as an engineer, of course, I have to be ready for that. I have to have a multiplayer gaming setup that we can use when we're ready. In lieu of um, having enough kids right now to solve that with our team, um, sorry, with our family, I just enlisted my team. We're all pretty big uh, Minecraft players, um, by which I don't mean that we're good, just mean that we play it a lot. And this brings us to our first challenge. Um, I have less time to game. I want to use that time as, pro uh, as properly as possible, as well as possible, you know, like not wasted on, on the stuff that you don't want to do. And like most engineers, I don't enjoy doing the same tasks over and over again, unless it's clicking rerun on your GitHub actions. Uh, that's, that's always a joy. So the real problem here is how do we make the time to dig up hundreds of blocks, thousands of blocks that we can use as building materials in Minecraft without enabling cheat modes? Because cheats are no fun, right? Well, it's simple. Don't build alone, always build together. This goes as well for Minecraft as it does for your engineering career. If you help other people build, you're gonna be a better builder. Uh, they'll teach you things that you didn't know. So these are life lessons. Didn't expect that when I started up Minecraft. We solved it slightly differently. Engineers, right? Uh, overthink the uh, solution instead of asking a human being to join you. We, uh, we built a bot. And we took this way too seriously. We gave it a conversational interface. Uh, I know we're very much into AI and everything. This is not the kind of conversational interface where you tell the bot could you do this and you know, like, what are your thoughts on building this kind of house? This is more um, sending an API request and getting a 200 back. Um, it's one way communication, but it's still communication. And of course, you know, I work in infrastructure, I was an SRE. Uh, my bot has to have observability. Uh, so we built Datadog into the system and we track what we do. It's a very costly bot, but it is worth it. And you know, for the sci-fi fans here, uh, we gave the bot, well, there we go. Two of the three laws of robotics. Uh, we didn't really care about the bot protecting itself. We have workload orchestration for that. If the bot crashes, if the bot uh, kills itself, eh, we have software for that. Make it more manageable, bit of code, package the bot up, it's a Node.js application, uh, so I think yesterday somebody mentioned one of those 40 gig containers. We're only clocking in at two uh, because Node is uh, gracious like that. But it's great, it works. We can ship it around the world and um, play together. And once the bot is packaged, we find ourselves in that situation. Well, I have the bot, I have the game. Uh, I've got pretty good hardware, but do I want to run the bot locally? Of course not. Uh, I mean, who does that anymore? I also have almost unlimited AWS uh, credits, uh, thanks to my job. So we may have over-engineered this a little bit. If you're thinking about um, 
the Martian right now, Mike Watney, going, you know, I have to science the shit out of this, pla uh, this planet. It's pretty much what we did. Uh, for this demo, we picked AWS because it's just more fun um, to do it with one cloud right now, and also because our finance team was uh, very insistent that I don't run this demo many more times. I'll let you guess, while I give the talk, how much the, the setup that we have cost, and whoever gets it right, I'll ship you chocolate from the Netherlands. So, first things first, we can run the bot somewhere, but first, we really need a server to run the bot on, I'm not using my local machine. So, I work at a company called HashiCorp. We make a tool called Nomad, which is a workload orchestration tool. Throw a container at it, a Java executable, sorry, a Java jar file or an executable or whatever you have, and we'll run it. A couple things that are important here. Uh, we obviously want to define a service and the ports it runs on. We want to make sure our data gets properly stored. Once we start building a world, I don't want to reconnect and lose everything there. Data persistence is important, no matter if you're gaming or working with AI models. And then, of course, we also want to specify an image. The Minecraft community is very, very generous in terms of providing stuff like this. Um, the image we picked here, community contribution with every feature and every toggle exposed, which is perfect. Because as engineers, we love nothing more than defining around 254 variables and setting same defaults. <coughs> and then, well, as you can see, we have a handful of these uh, defaults in here. Uh, all the code here, I'll make available afterwards if you want to play with it. I'll give you the caveat of uh, don't do it in everywhere in the exact same way. And of course, we mentioned it's a Java application inside a Docker container on a hypervisor on another hypervisor. Uh, so we need some resource constraints. 12 gigs is nice. If you can go for 24 or 30 or 192, you're gonna have a better time. So let's quickly run this. And then once it gets scheduled, we'll switch to a browser in a second. We will have a live running Minecraft server. And if you happen to have Minecraft on your machine, the Java edition, you're welcome to join, uh, interact with my bots. Please know that if you strike them, they will strike back, and there is slightly more of them than you will be on your own. So, switch over here, and server's running. Very boring technology, right? Like, run, what is it, uh, 70, 80 lines of code, execute it through the server, and all of a sudden you have this running machine. This is how technology should be. I say this not as a representative of the company, I say this as somebody who got paged in the middle of the night, somebody who does not want to ever be paged in the middle of the night, or during the day. If your technology is not boring, you're doing it wrong. If your technology is fancy, complex, and needs a doc, docs page, that has 20, 30 pages of reading material. It's a great white paper. It's not gonna be very user friendly, which means humans will, mista will make mistakes. If you can avoid that, always good. So if we switch in here, well, we see it running. It's a little small on my screen. Kind of hoping uh, it's good enough for you. Uh, and if we switch it over, Zero out of 256, which is absolutely correct because nobody's connected right now. Uh, Java applications, it takes a little while to load, of course. And this is a live server. This is a live demo. Uh, and so there we have it, multiplayer gaming environment. You can support 256 uh, people in, I wanna say, about 30, 29 AWS regions. But if we only deploy it in one region, that's, that's boring. So let's first check if this makes sense, right? When you're building stuff, never start with just the end result. Never do all the steps, especially if you're doing things at scale, never do all the regions in one go. Let's build it up step by step. Uh, so just like before we did with the server, we're gonna express our code 
uh, are bought as code and make sure that shows up as well. A uh, couple configurations here, uh, the Docker image which we pull from the GitHub registry. Uh, it's all a Apache 2, so feel free to use it, feel free to uh, improve it, and definitely feel free to correct my code because it's been a while, but it works, and that's what's important. Uh, then, this is my personal favorite. Running a bot, running any application, super easy. But bots are people, right? We wanna know what they're called. So we give them the very human readable name of the AWS availability zone they're stored in. Which works for me, bot doesn't care, and if the bot cares and strikes me, well, see what we said before. It's a win-win for uh, most of us except the bot that is unhappy. And of course, finally um, express some of the resources. We clock it at high usage. These bots need about 70 megahertz, so you could run this on Raspberry Pi um, two zeros. I wouldn't recommend it though. Network on those is horrible and it's not great for uh, constantly streaming information. But run the same image, well sorry, run the same flow, run the job, and uh, switch over here. And if my screen refreshed correctly, then you should be seeing the uh, job overview of the server and the bot running. And then what you'll actually see is we have three bots running because one bot is fun, right? But I mean, we've all read or seen iRobot. I suggest if you've only uh, seen it, you should definitely read it. It's a different and better story. Three bots is always better than one bot. Single AWS region could be a single GCP region. Um, we've got code to do it in uh, DigitalOcean as well. But a single region is not HA. This, this is not AWS best practices. This is not any company's best practice. It needs to be HA, so we need a second region in there. But, I mean, come on, while we're at it, second region, it's fun, right? <clears throat> let's, go, uh, let's go a little bit more expensive here. Uh, question really is where do we go from here? Do we go here? Add a couple of things in, a couple new clouds. Uh, each cloud assigned to a different continent. Should we do that? Should we go even deeper? Oh, there's so many options. The largest version of this demo that we ran um, had three clouds and 89 different regions. Well, 89 different region identifiers, technically, geographically speaking, it was only about 60 uh, because Azure and uh, AWS and GCP, they are obviously in the same cities. And this is fun. When you have an incident like um, GCP had with one of their data centers that got flooded in the summer, you can still keep gaming. This is important. So how do we do that? Well, let me um, switch back to my editor real quick. And I'll show you some Terraform. Uh, before I dive too deep into that, quick show of hands, anyone ever heard of Terraform? All right, sweet. Uh, we do fun things with licenses and infrastructure. Uh, if you didn't get the first part, that's cool. So Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool uh, which allows you to express what you want in your cloud, in your Datadog account, in, in pretty much any provider that you can imagine as code. And that's important because at three in the morning, not having to remember what you need to type, but just having a piece of code that you can run is very non-expensive. Whereas humans having to remember all the exact steps of what you need to do is very expensive. I'll never call it cheap because any time you get disturbed for an incident that is not cheap, there's a mental health impact, there's a physical health impact, so don't discount that ever. Even if you feel like the hero at 3am, or 315 when you fixed it, it is not worth it. Prevention is way better than um, having to douse a fire afterwards. So, let's do some interactive parts. Uh, who here uses AWS? Raise your hand. All right, sweet. Quick guess, how many regions do you think AWS has? We're we talking 10, 15, 20, 100? Not points of presence, not CDN, but actual AWS regions. About 20? It's a good guess. 
22? 42. Man, you have access to all the ISO and top secret and auto partitions as well. I like it. We should talk. I have a demo that we could run. Uh, 22 is the default if you open a new account right now. Uh, not all 22 are always enabled, but those are the ones your account will have access to. Uh, 29 if you click enable on everything, and then if you add in Golf Cloud and a couple of others. Well, we haven't run this demo yet. Uh, it goes up significantly. A lot of fun. Problem is, I one, don't know all of them, two, I don't really want to know all of them. Like most engineers, I'm a lazy engineer, which means I prefer my tools to do the thinking for me. And so in Terraform, there's an API call that allows me to get all the active regions from a provider, in this case, AWS. And if we run that, then we get pretty much this result back that you're seeing on screen right now, uh, a list of all the, the regions that are active for my account. And if I go in there or somebody goes in there, most likely somebody from our finance team who got frustrated that I ran this around the world in literally every zone and they disable something, my code dynamically responds to that by actually terminating the stuff there. So back to our editor. Take a little bit of Terraform code. I'm showing you the highlights because obviously there's more than uh, the 10 lines of code. But the key here is we're taking the input of that region, which you can see on um, line two in the for each. We're popping in all the, uh, the region names and then creating a different Terraform deployment in all of those regions. And we attach that to a VCS repository that has the deployment for that region. In terms of AWS, we're talking about an auto-scaling group that sets up um, three clients, three servers, uh, has some user data in there to install the right software, and then pretty much does that and reports it back so we can do some orchestration. The important part here is when you run this demo, start out with the inactive branch because that will not deploy anything that costs you money in all those regions. If you don't, your AWS... Um, bill, well not the bill, view will look like, let me uh, switch this over real quick for you. Um, there we go. And let me highlight this for you. Will uh, result in this. Uh, each of those is about, you should be seeing 168 instances that are currently running. Uh, each of those has a cost attached to it. This does not get covered by the free tier, in case you were wondering. But that's okay. Gaming is fun and you know, maybe we'll turn this into a career. If that doesn't work, I guess we'll just talk about it. It's also fun. Uh, so the inactive branch is something we found out when, uh, when we ran this at scale the last time and realized that actually the deployment was fine. It was very reactive. We were able to add new regions, new accounts even. We just didn't have a good way of cleaning it up. Um, it's costly. Having to do this all manually, even with um, tooling like AWS Nuke, not the best part. And so, as with any engineering team, we had somebody from our network team join us. I was like, well, how do you do all the ciders? Well, we didn't want to. We wanted to use default resources. But of course, uh, it's a regional deployment. You kind of don't want to run everything across the public internet if you can prevent that. Uh, because again, cost and also just bad practice. Never run stuff across the public internet if you don't have to, even if you have certificates. And it's also much cheaper to, um, computationally cheaper and latency cheaper um, to not. Uh, so pretty good factors. Uh, we ended up creating, let me show you this one. Uh, let me put it this way. If you think a multi-cloud naming scheme is hard, try coming up a side range scheme that doesn't collide and works and is predictable across multiple clouds. Uh, for us, we parse the region string, we break it down into geo, so um, the continent they're in, uh, cardinality, um, so the directions of the compass, or in the case of AWS, because they also throw in the word central, which is not part of your compass, uh, and of course, um, the index. And that gives you something that looks like this, uh, we've tested this across 
all accounts except AWS China uh, because we could not get access to that. But it works, hasn't collided yet, and it definitely scales for the next 15 minutes. And that's all we need. And so if we run this, I could run this on my CLI. I'm running it in one of our commercial products because it's easier and visually more pleasing to me to see it. We get something that looks like this. Uh, 28, 29 workspaces that all deployed the same exact thing. And so let me um, show you how this really looks like. For which, there we go. So if this worked out, you should be seeing my Minecraft interface. And while we wait for the Wi-Fi uh, to decide if um, the server is actually available, We'll, uh, we'll just make up some stuff. Like the beautiful logo uh, my designer uh, came up with. Minecraftifying um, conference logos is, is apparently a skill. We'll just connect and hey, there we go. Beautiful. So uh, first of all, Minecraft server, we deployed that. It works. Uh, we're in front of a chase building, so this is going to be Guess we're gonna talk to a representative there later. Uh, let's see if we can find our bots. Uh, so, well, there we go. All, uh, what is that, 47, I guess, joined successfully, so that's, that's a great start. And I think I see them down here somewhere. Which is gonna be real creepy if they're actually there. <coughs> oh, yes. No? Kind of look, hey, there we go. Hey, friends. Uh, so uh, Minecraft doesn't do a lot of collision detection, as you can tell. Um, these are actually 47 of them. Uh, so let me go somewhere else. They like following me, which is nice. Um, and then maybe not a straight line. We also see we have one of the bots um, misbehaving. All right, there we go. So because they're all standing in the exact same spot and their movement speed is uh, surprisingly the exact same, they all uh, move as one until they uh, get to a part where they no longer uh, move as one. So what we have here is the quickest way to um, get points with your credit card, if that's what you tie to your AWS account, or an easy way to, uh, to build an army of bots. I like to think of it more as a second part. So, uh, now, if we tell them to uh, mine, mine something, mine dirt. There we go. So while they um, go and destroy my, uh, my level, uh, let me uh, switch back to my slides real quick. Here we go. Uh, bots are gone. You should be seeing a pink uh, screen, pinkish. Apple wants to call it pink, so we're, we're good. We'll, we'll go with that. Bots are doing their stuff. We have a server running. You noticed one of the bots was uh, leaving and rejoining. That's by design. Uh, it's not a bug. It's, it's actually part of the demo. Uh, and honestly, if you weren't paying attention, you might think that this talk was about Minecraft. But it wasn't. In reality, and, and this is really what's key, um, this talk is about showing you how to build a system that's fault tolerant across multiple regions, multiple, sorry, multiple regions of the same provider, multiple cloud providers, and then of course, figuring out how to operate a system of that scale. Um, even if you lose several regions. You might lose several regions because somebody doesn't understand why you're deploying stuff in um, Frankfurt right now. You could be losing a region because there's a weather system that's affecting your cloud, which is always a fun one to put in an incident report. And it could be that you're just trying to deploy a type of instance or setup that is currently exhausted. Um, I think uh, Chris from Fermion was uh, talking about it yesterday. 
Um, if you buy up enough GPU with AWS in certain regions, especially in Europe right now, GPU will be gone, and that instance type will be reported by the API is no longer available. It's a problem. Uh, you need a system that is able to respond to that. And this is one way of codifying that pattern, one way of building a system that allows you to respond to those events. Um, and of course, when you codify your infrastructure, especially when you make one region feel like another region, you don't have the cognitive cost of trying to figure out, well, why is my deployment in Brazil so much different than the one in London? It shouldn't be. So, uh, three minutes ago, a couple of takeaways. Uh, train like you play. I think this one is, is very important. Do not cut corners in favor of delivering quicker. It will cost you in the long run, and it's not worth it. It doesn't scale now because you will have to remember what you did, and you will then have to do it again to verify that what you remembered is correct and then codify it. And it becomes an absolute nightmare, always. Uh, especially when you work across multiple clouds, multiple providers and everything. Um, codify not just your infrastructure, but also your processes. We had a lot of fun with this, uh, especially when we built it the first time. We've gotten it to the point where spinning up uh, 178 CPU, sorry, 178 instance, uh, 168 instance demo takes us five minutes. Uh, that is in large part because everything is codified. We need one access key at least. We actually do them uh, by region, so in case something leaks, there's a um, blast radius limitation, but you could do it with one access key. Just please don't use your root key. AWS will get really upset. And when an outage occurs, there's nothing for us to worry about because we know how to easily get it up in a different region. And then I think this, this is really the key here. Uh, when you build stuff, architect for awareness, let your systems be enhanced by the knowledge of, hey, there's another region I could shift work to, there's another region I can benefit from, maybe that region is closer to your end customer, but don't depend on it. Cluster I showed you earlier, works best when all three cloud providers are running at the same time. We have a couple thousand gigahertz, obviously, um, available, a couple terabytes of uh, memory. I've never actually looked at the full amount, and it's fun. Uh, the AWS part alone cost us 1700 bucks for a three-day demo, uh, but it was worth it, because we had so much fun playing, and we spun up a ton of bots. So if you run this code, please don't, don't tell me that I didn't tell you. I think it's also a note in the, um, in the readme. But build a system that's aware of its surroundings. Take away a cloud provider, see what happens, and that's a hard one, right? Chaos engineering is, is one, costly, two, it's very hard to defend to people, and three, it forces you to revisit what you're doing. Uh, Gwen made a good call here, work with your vendors. I'm not saying ask us, I'm saying with your cloud provider, ask them, hey, we wanna do this, what's the best approach to doing this? How do we solve this problem that might be new for your company, but is definitely not gonna be new for that vendor? They see it across 100, 1,000, maybe a million customers, they'll have some, some ideas. Things work better together, but they shouldn't necessarily break if they are standalone. Um, and then finally, if you wanna check the code, I used to build this pattern. There's about 25 different repositories that go into this. Uh, head on over to github.com slash workloads. Uh, we maintain the complete code base, it's all APL2, uh, and has many more patterns in there. Got, some, uh, got a QR code for you as well, if that's easier. And then, I think, that's it. So uh, somebody asked before, slides will be available on speaker deck, but really the slides, they're just Minecraft screenshots. The real thing you should get is the code, check it out, and let us know how it works for you. Thank you all.